right, so we're doing the install on the 2021 L5P Pulsar. Uh, we'll take a look at the manual and see the tools required. First thing you wanna do is remove the inner fender bolts. It's gonna be T15 Torx, and we'll do that and come back. So there is one push pin right on the top center of the fender. We'll need either a Christmas tree puller or just a pothead screwdriver to pull that out, but the rest are all Torx bits. So you need to turn the wheel pretty much as far as it can go to the left to access the last three Torx bits. Remove the fender. Easiest way is to push it inward, kind of release it from the inner side of the fender. And then on the bottom corner, you just kind of have to yank it to get it to release from the, uh, the mud flap there. So now we've got the fender removed. We've got access to the PCM and everything we need to do to the in install. The first thing we need to remove is actually the transfer case control module, which is this piece right here. There's two 10 millimeter screws on either side of it we need to remove, and then we can get to the PCM. You can just pull that out and set it aside. You don't need to disconnect it or anything. And now you have clear access to the PCM. All right, and then next, you've got four seven millimeter bolts holding the PCM in each corner. They're black, there's one on each corner. You can leave the PCM connected until we get to the point where we're gonna actually remove it, or you can unhook it now, doesn't really matter. All right, so now I've got the PCM removed. It's time to install the Pulsar. You just want to line up these main connectors with those connectors and make sure you kind of find the, the connection itself, find the connector itself. You don't roll this on or you'll break a pin or bend a pin. Once you get it on, apply force straight and even. You'll see I'm on the ground so I can actually kind of Put some weight into that. As long as you're applying pressure evenly on the pulsar, you won't break anything and you're fully seated on the PCM. So now that we've got it connected, we want to install the W brackets onto the back of the PCM to hold the pulsar to the PCM. All right, so the next part of the install is going to be the pulsar mounting bracket. Here's the bracket with the L shaped connector. I've, Pre-assembled those to make it a little bit easier for the install as well as to show where it's going to go. So I'll get to where we're gonna mount it on the truck in a second. I just wanna show you guys how this actually connects to the PCM once it's in the vehicle. So now that we've got the PCM made to the Pulsar, uh, well, how this is going to work is you've got these two pieces. This is actually going to sandwich between the PCM and the, the Pulsar. So when you tighten this screw down, it'll pinch that together and lock the PCM in place. When we reinstall the PCM, you won't have access to two of the four bolts you already removed. And this is going to replace uh, the supports for that. So you can see it's pinched between the PCM and the bracket. And then we're actually going to install this on the factory bracket right here this is a 14 millimeter bolt we're going to remove that bolt slide this in between that and that will go right there all right so we're going to remove this bolt we're going to slide our l bracket in between this piece and this piece right into the little groove right there. Line that back up. And you can put this screw back in. Make sure before you tighten that down that this is still parallel with the stock mounting bracket as well. And then that 
is where that's going to live while the Pulsar is installed. All right, so now the bracket's installed, we're ready to put the PCM and Pulsar assembly back, back in. Like I said, you're only gonna need to use two of the factory bolts. And this is kind of a tight squeeze, so you wanna kind of slide it in towards the middle and then up from there. And one other thing good about pre-installing that bracket is you can kind of give the Pulsar something to sit on before you get the bolts in there. So now the bracket is holding the entire assembly up so it doesn't fall. So you can grab the two seven millimeter bolts to go back up in the bottom right and top right corners. So once you've got those two bolts mostly installed, I say mostly because you want to put them in loose, I'm going to get you in here so you can see the bracket installation. Before you tighten everything down, you want to make sure you push the PCM up so that bracket pinches right in and then you can tighten everything up. So I would say loosely tighten the right bolts first and then align the bracket and tighten that last. Okay, and then with a Phillips screwdriver, tighten that down till it's snug and the PCM is fully seated on the stock bracket. Don't over tighten that because you can bend the L bracket. But you can see there's the complete installation of the bracket. All right, so now that everything's mounted up, we can put the connectors back on. And I always like to start with the far left, the blue connector first. Just need to move these out of the way just a little bit. Make sure the connector is lined up straight before you start moving the lever at all. Once that's down, lock the, push the locking pin. Same thing with the middle one. Make sure you engage it first before you move the lever. Push the locking pin down. And some of these connectors may be a little bit snug. So just pull on that to make sure you can align this last connector. Then the PCM is installed. And then next is your transfer case control module. We're gonna put this back, but we're only going to use one of the stock bolts in the top right. The left bottom bolt is going to be a bolt that we supply. Still a 10 millimeter bolt, but it's shorter so it doesn't get in the way of the, the Pulsar itself. And then when you're installing this, make sure that you note the guide pin and you want that to be installed in a hole on the mount bracket right there. Here's a better view of the mount hole that the transfer case control module goes in. And there's the pin that you need to make match up with that. So push these out of the way. Stock bolt goes back in the same location on the right. And then our shorter supply bolt will mount on the bottom left. So once you get the transfer case control module back in place, the installation is complete. Before I put the fender well and everything back in, it's a good idea to hop on the truck, test everything, make sure everything works. So if in the case you bend a pin or something like that, you don't have to remove the fender at that point. So we'll hop in the truck and go over that. And then to change power levels with the Pulsar, you just use your cruise control buttons. As long as cruise control is not active, you hit the up arrow. 
10 miles per hour is level one, 20 miles per hour is level two, 30 is three, and so on. If you're going 80 miles per hour and you wanna change the power level, it will take over the miles per hour reading for five seconds and then go back to whatever speed you're going. And if you wanna use the high idle feature on the Pulsar, while the vehicle's running in park, turn on the cruise control and then use the plus or minus buttons to increase the RPM. You can go all the way up to 1400 RPM and let it sit there. If you ever want to cancel that, you disable cruise control or simply hit the brake. All right, and then to access the programming menu, you've got to put the vehicle in the run position. On a keyless entry, you've got to have your foot off of the brake and press and hold the start button for about five to seven seconds. The light on the button will go green and the instrument cluster will light up as if the vehicle's running. All right, now that the vehicle is in the run position to access the programming menu, cruise control off, press and hold the cruise cancel button for approximately five seconds. The speedometer will sweep up to 140 miles per hour and then rest at 10. You have seven settings. 10 is the speed limiter, 20 TPMS, 30 tire size correction, 40 axle ratio, 50 is to clear your DTCs, 60 will enable a manual regen, and 70 is to do a trans relearn. You can only adjust one programming feature per programming session. So you can't go in and change multiple features at the same, in the same session. All right, so right now I'm gonna go in and change my speed limiter. I'm gonna hit the cancel button on one for speed limiter. The speedometer will scroll up to 140, let you know that that's the option you selected. And right now our speed limiter is set at 98 miles per hour. If I want to bump that up, say 105, hit the cancel button again. The speedometer will sweep again to 140 and let me know that it programmed the speed limiter. And now we want to change our tire size. You got to access the programming menu again, press and hold the cancel button for five seconds. And we're going to go up to option three or 30 miles per hour for the tire size. Hit the cancel button to confirm. And then on the tire size option, you've got to enter the stock tire size first and then the modified tire size. If you don't know your stock tire size, it's on the driver's side. Uh, door panel. You've got to enter the solid number first and then the decimal after that. So this vehicle came with 32 and a half stock. So that's 32.5 is the stock tire size and then the modified tires. You've got 35 inch tires. We'll go up to 35 hit the cancel button. And if it's a fraction, you can enter the fraction here. Hit cancel to confirm, and we'll sweep to program. And if you wanna change your axle ratio, access the programming menu, press on the cancel button again. That's option four or 40 miles per hour. And just like tire size, you've got to enter the stock axle ratio first and then the modified. So three is the whole number. And so right now it's 342s. And then the modified, we have stock axles on this truck, so we're gonna leave that the same. Do not modify the value if you have not physically changed the gears in the truck. and then hit cancel to program. And if you want to clear your DTCs, to access the programming menu again, press and hold the cancel button for five seconds. Speedometer will sweep. We're gonna go up to option five, 
or 50 miles per hour. Hit cancel. And just like that, it cleared your DTC. So if you've got a check engine light, just access that menu. It won't read them or anything. It's just going to clear it. So you won't have access to it after you clear it out. If you clear the check engine light or clear the DTCs and the light comes right back on, that means you've got an active code and you can't clear it. The next option is to initiate a manual regen. So this is a manual regen, not a mobile regen. So this will be both the vehicle in park and idling. So press and hold the cruise cancel button for five seconds. We're going to go up into option six or manual regen or 60 miles per hour. And as soon as you hit the cancel button, it tells the PCM to initiate a manual regen when you start the vehicle. If for some reason you start the vehicle and it sits at 100 miles per hour instead of sweeping as normal, that means your truck isn't warm enough or there's another condition that like you don't have enough fuel to actually go into manual regen. Just make sure that you have your hood popped. Uh, you don't have anything behind the vehicle. You're not pointed at your house or you're in an open area because it will rev up to about 2200 RPMs and put a lot of exhaust heat out the exhaust. At this point, I'll just start the truck. And since our vehicle is at the right operating temperature, it's already starting the manual regen. And if you ever want to cancel, you can just hit the brake or and it'll slowly come down and cancel that at any time during that, or you can shut the key off to cancel the manual regen. And it'll sweep when it has completed or ended that session. All right, and then the last option is a transmission relearn. Press and hold the cancel button to access the programming menu. We're going to scroll all the way up to seven or 70 miles per hour. And as soon as you hit the cancel, the Pulsar sends a message to initiate a transmission relearn. Really the only reason you'd want to do something like this is if uh, the truck doesn't seem to shift very well with the Pulsar installed in the higher power levels. As soon as you initiate the trans relearn, the truck will shift erratically. It's going to flare. It will shift very hard sometimes. So just drive as you normally do. If you're drive aggressive, continue to drive aggressive because it's going to wipe out anything that the transmission has learned up to that point. 